Hello, I'm Matthew Bolton from Mac Format, uh, and this is the second part of the Mac Pro Diary that I'm running, letting you know what it's like to actually have one and to do various bits and pieces with it. Um, although what I've been doing for the last day or so is gaming, because technically I'm on holiday, and that's all I really want to do. Um, and given the opportunity for having a Mac Pro, um, in particular the one we've got with its two ludicrous top-of-the-line graphics cards uh, and having a 4k screen means that I wanted to see if it was possible to do some 4k gaming on the Mac. Um, honestly wasn't sure if we managed to be able to do much of it, I wasn't sure how many games would support it, but actually it's quite a few. Uh, most of the games I tried supported it in one way or the other and it looks absolutely fantastic um, and I absolutely cannot wait to get in and play some more of it um, and I can't wait to show you some of this. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see some of the detail if I zoom in but there's no real way for me to show you what exactly what 4k gaming is like. Um, so I'll show you as best I can in this video but I'm also going to try putting some uh, 4k screen grabs up on the Mac format Twitter feed that hopefully you can look at in their native res and you can zoom right in and see exactly how much detail there is. Um, but 4K gaming isn't the only thing I've been doing. Obviously, I've also been editing these videos, and I've been doing that on the Mac Pro. Um, I've actually been doing it in iMovie, not Final Cut Pro, because, to be honest, I couldn't be bothered with using it for such simple stuff. I mean, it's only really basic editing to put these together. Um, but still, you know, it's exporting at HD, it's um, moving a few, few things around. So at the end, uh, I'll talk to you a little bit um, about how that worked um, and how well it looks like the Mac Pro is performing in that region, even if it is just very, very uh, light video editing, I must admit. Okay, so the first game I'm going to try, uh, or I'm going to show you guys at least, is Bioshock Infinite. Um, but you'll notice that I'm in teeny tiny 4K mode. Um, this is because it's the only way to get games to actually register that they're on a 4K monitor. If you put the mode to the 1080p, even the high DPI mode, then uh, they'll think that 1080, 1920 by 1080 is the highest they can go. Okay, here we go with Bioshock. Um, let's take a bit of a look around. So, as you can see, things look very, very crisp. Let me take you in close on this clock tower in particular, which looks gorgeous. You've got light glinting off the clock. Um, and off its gold parts and you can see the delicate patterns and everything um, it's really impressive uh, and if I move away from this fog slightly um, you can see that the frame rate at least when I'm standing still is fine as well you can see that the flag is billowing nice and smoothly um, and over here we've got a nice view of a huge Fink sign, all the individual parts of it. Um, on a game with strong art direction like this, 4K looks absolutely fantastic. Um, okay, this is Spec Ops The Line, a uh, recent military shooter. Well, recent on Mac, slightly older on PC, but uh, not a lot older. It's a game where loads of effort has gone into um, making the textures of the ground and the walls making it look like a real place um, and that looks great in 4k that looks really um looks really lovely the walls of this building we're in look like a fairly convincing luxury resort gone um gone derelict gone um broken and uh disheveled so this is rayman origins which has just come out for the mac um, and the weirdest thing, this is the weirdest thing we've seen in all of the 4K stuff so far, which is that it's in slow motion uh, compared to when you play it on a different Mac. Um, actually, we say it's the weirdest thing we've seen in, in 4K, but we actually tried bumping the resolution down to 1600 by 900, and uh, it was exactly the same. So. Um, it does seem to be something to do with the game and the Mac Pro, which is a bit of a shame because in 4K it looks great. Um, all this kind of animation looks um, looks beautiful in the super high res, although some of the background stuff 
seems to be slightly low res, seems to be a bit blocky, but um, all this stuff up front looks absolutely stunning. Um, but yes, very strange, for some reason the entire game runs in slow motion on the Mac Pro. Uh, and now for something that isn't 4K. Uh, this is SimCity for the Mac. And if you tried it, you'll already know. If you read our review, you'll also already know. But basically, it's technically not brilliant, uh, on the Mac at least. Um, Performance-wise, it's just really poor. If you run it on um, a light spec Mac, something like a MacBook Air, and run it on the exact same spec PC, on the PC you can run it perfectly smoothly, and on the Mac it will barely function. It is absolutely infuriating. Um, but loading it up on the Mac Pro, first things first is there's no 4K mode, so we're stuck in 1080p. Uh, instead we just cranked everything up to maximum as we have been with everything else and you can actually see this is kind of jerky and this isn't even a particularly busy, this is just a little getting started city so it's not even a very busy one. Um, and scrolling around up here is okay, this is fairly smooth but as soon as I scroll in any closer it's, there's a lot of motion blur which is trying to hide it, but you can just sort of tell that the frame rate is a bit iffy. Uh, so yeah, uh, I said I wanted to talk a little bit about iMovie. Um, I'm actually using it in the um, 1080p high DPI mode, the retina-like mode, instead of um, at native 4K, uh, and I'll show you why. Um, it does give you loads and loads of space to work with when you switch to 4K, but for something this simple, it was a bit fiddly. I mean, you can see, I can see all of my clips nice and clearly up here, um, and plenty of space for um, lots of video and audio stuff on the timeline, but it was just overkill and ultimately a bit fiddly for putting something together, for putting together something as simple as these videos. So I was much happier with the just the high DPI mode, um, much more manageable. Um, so yeah, as I say, putting together something this simple really didn't tax the Mac, the Mac Pro much as far as the creation tools went. Um, outputting, um, I actually did the last one at 720p, uh, I thought it was recorded at 1080. And we'll just export. I don't know why it wasn't finding any files, but it seems to be working, so that's fine. Now let's see how long it thinks it's going to take. So this is a 10 minute video, recorded at 1080, outputting at 720, uh, 7 minutes, which is pretty good. I have done a comparison compared to my um, iMac, which is reasonably old now, but it is a quad-core Core i5, so it does do a pretty good job, job of... Um, chomping its way through video, um, but we will do a really nice hardcore video transcoding comparison um, a bit later, we'll, encode, we'll transcode a Blu-ray quality video into um, H.264 for playing back on an Apple TV or something like that. Um, I also got asked about um, the video editing kind of power chops of the Mac Pro and in particular about core usage. Uh, so, this is Activity Monitor. Here's my list of cores. There's actually 16 here because the CPU is hyper-threaded, meaning that there are two virtual cores per real core available. Um, now, as you can see, this is currently exporting um, the latest diary from iMovie. And as you can see, we are not maxing out all the cores. Um, what's often happening is what you can see on the right where um, one of the virtual cores per real core will be at kind of 60-70% and the other one will be at 30-40% um, but that, and that's consistent across the board. One's going full pelt, well not even full pelt, but one's um, going a fair way and the other is much lighter. 
Um, I mean, this is a considerable load we're putting on it, but um, Apple's own movie encoders have always been a little bit up and down in terms of how well they use the resources of um, of the computers they're on. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow when we do our handbrake test, we'll get a much more stern um, look at what the cores do because handbrake really tends to max them all out. Um, but still, under this usage, um, we've seen the Mac Pro kind of actually reach somewhere close to what we might consider peak performance. Um, a little while ago I was playing a lot of games and doing some of this video stuff and it was getting pretty warm, especially compared to yesterday. I can definitely still feel a fair bit of warm hair, warm air pushing up out of the top, um, but obviously like it's by no means kind of dangerous or hurting my hand or anything like that. Um, the sides also get warm, but we're talking warm, not hot. We're talking um, if your radiator comes on from off, kind of within the, the heat it reaches within the first five minutes. It's it's just warm. It's sort of nice to place your hand on, but uh, so far I haven't made it reach any dangerous temperature or anything like that. And the fan gets no noisier. It hasn't made any more noise since it started getting hot than it made when it was cool. Um, right now it's not actually at the hottest I've felt it, but as I say, even when it was, um, it was perfectly comfortable to touch, absolutely no problem. And this is under, yeah, this is under a decent load. So what we'll try to do is put it under even heavier loads at some point and uh, see how it gets then. So that was my first uh, foray into 4K gaming. Um, it was uh, mostly up, but a little bit funny. Bioshock looked fantastic in particular. Spec Ops The Line looked great. I tried a bunch of other games that um, I didn't record for you because you'd have just been sitting there forever listening to me go, mmm, like pretty games. But um, there are also a few odd ones. Um, a new game, The Stanley Parable, for some reason loses its main menu when you switch to 4K mode, which is odd. Uh, you saw that Rayman ran in slow motion, or that wasn't 4K. For some reason, it just runs slowly on the Mac Pro. Um, so we'll see if we can look into that. It runs perfectly normally on my iMac, but uh, oh well. Um, there were a few other ones. Portal 2 crashed um, every time I tried to quit 4K mode, funnily enough. Um, and uh, yeah, bits and pieces. I would say that 4K gaming is um, still perhaps stumbling on its way to completion, but I was really surprised to even have this many games working this well. And it all looks absolutely gorgeous, and I can't wait to get a bit more time to play with them all um, really properly. Um, but actually, next time I'm going to look into Handbrake, like I said, maybe look into a few more benchmarks and performance things and see if we can get some more crunchy numbers out of the pro side of the Mac Pro, um, even if all I want to do is play games now. Uh, thanks for watching, see you next time.